Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, whenever you may see this. Uh, another installment of Ask Midwest Mealworms. Uh, doing some YouTube Live, I'll publish this, uh, and then I'll grab the audio and get it out to the podcast, Mealworms and More, so check that out. Um, just having some coffee here in the morning, because it's morning for me. Today, we are going to talk about grain mites. Um, so on, I believe it was on a Facebook post, um, and, uh, I'm trying to go check to see, yeah, it was Facebook. Um, somebody asked the question around how do you stop green mites and or get rid of green mites? So let's walk through, um, what green mites are. Uh, green mites for a mealworm farmer or for an insect farmer are a pest. Uh, and what they do is they propagate really, really fast. Um, they will reproduce super fast, uh, especially if you don't keep them in check. Um, and they will take over and destroy an insect colony. Um, they're preventable, right? But they can also be combated. So you can work on different things to stop them once you have them. Um, grain mites are very prolific in um, a high humidity area which if you're raising mealworms, you need high humidity. Um, you need that in the bin. You could have it in your entire room. So green mites are always something to be wary about um, and to be prepared for. Uh, so what green mites will do, um, they'll come in, usually the eggs will come in on whatever substrate you're using. So wheat bran, for example, that's what I use. Uh, wheat mids, oatmeal, they can be in all different kinds of things, even human grade um, uh, substrate, right? So if you buy a package of uh, reds or something from a grocery store, uh, it could still have grain mites in it. Low probability for human consumption food, um, but I have heard uh, people say that they've gotten different bugs from that. Um, and there are some pictures, you know, obviously there's fun stuff you can find on the internet of like moths in packages of, um, of grain and whatnot uh, in the grocery store. So it happens from time to time. Um, so let's go with the, the how do you stop them once you have them? So when you have green mites, don't panic. Um, I actually had them, I haven't had them for a long, long time um, in both the original farms I started five plus years ago and then out in the farm uh, today. Um, but I had them about two months ago and it had been years be before then. Uh, and it took me a little while to track down how I got them, where they came from. But when I got them, uh, when I found them, what I did was I removed the bins um, and, and in my case, it was actually a, a 32 gallon trash container uh, that I had chicken feed in. Um, so they were all over that thing. Um, so I took that out of the farm um, and I got rid of the feed that was there. And then I took that that um, trash can and I put it put it on the other end of my property. So I've got enough room that I can take that away from the farm and just kind of leave it be. I came back to the farm and focused on basically scrubbing down, cleaning the area where they were at. Um, once I had done sort of a containment, cleaned around the area they were in, uh, I did some checking of some of the other things. So what you want to do is get a flashlight and, and just very carefully go around and, and just reflect that light, try to get the angle to where you can see on the side of something. And what that's going to let you do is see if there's something moving. Now you want to be very careful to not panic at this point because Green mites are tiny. I mean, absolutely tiny. You can see them with your eye, but you can very easily confuse them with dust, uh, especially grain dust. Um, so again, don't panic. All you're doing is collecting data at this point, trying to figure out where they might be um, and where they might need to be taken care of. So take your flashlight and just kind of shine it on edges, right? So pretend like this is the, my coffee mug for the morning. Pretend that this had grain mites on it. I would shine it down straight here so that you could see along the edge, right? If you look at it straight on, it might be really difficult. You might get a reflection. Look at it, um, in this case, from the top down, right? Shine it so that you can see uh, across it. And all you're doing is checking for movement. So you wanna be you know, cautious. If, if you've got this, uh, sometimes hands aren't very steady, right? So always be sure that um, it's actually a green mite. Right. And so it's going to move. You just watch it long enough. It'll start moving around. Um, you want to basically just find where they're at. Clean those surfaces. So 
Um, damp paper towel is perfectly fine. Um, if it's something like a, some of the containers out there that I use that I put through the dishwasher, I might Lysol, uh, like a Lysol wipe or something like that, steril sterilized wipe, um, just to clean them off. Put them through the dishwasher, for example. It's a good good excuse to do some cleaning, do some maintenance. Um, and basically, you're just trying to find where they're at. So you know how big of an issue you have, you have to deal with. Um, if they're in your grain, get rid of the grain. Uh, there's, that's just what you need to do. So a couple things that you could potentially do there, and this is also a way to prevent them, uh, throw that grain in the deep freeze. So if you have the ability to put that in the deep freeze and you're not concerned about those grain mites getting out, like if you've got a, a secondary deep freeze, for example, uh, if you're lucky enough to have that, um, if you're not wanting to mess with it or you're concerned about those grain mites getting into whatever's in your deep freeze, just pitch it. It's not worth the hassle. Uh, it's not worth the worry. Um, get rid of that and get some new, fresh uh, substrate. Um, the other thing you can look at doing uh, once you have those grain mites is get rid of humidity, get rid of moisture sources. They thrive on that. That's how we're going to get rid of them for the most part. Um, so in my case, I, I took that uh, bin out of there. I lowered the humidity in the farm. So, um, you know, depending on what process you're using or what scale you're at, uh, control that humidity. So in my case, I decreased it at least 20%. Um, kept it a lot lower than than I would normally do it. Uh, and I did that for at least two weeks. Um, I also tried to control, I, I didn't have any grain mites in bins with actual insects. So it was, it was centered around this one container I had. But if you find grain mites in your bins with your insects, um, what you want to do is withhold moisture. Um, don't put moisture in there and leave it in there. The insects are going to be okay. They're not going to die immediately. Um, they're not going to, you know, you're going to impact production a little bit, right? Uh, because you're withholding some of that moisture, um, but it's not going to be detrimental overall. So it's a good tactic to take. Withhold moisture, right? Every two to three days, let's say every 72 hours, take some moisture, put it in there, let those insects feed for two to three hours. Um, let them feed on that. The grain mites will get attracted to that moisture source, but let your insects feed. Um, after two to three hours, take that moisture source out, out, whether it's gone or not. So for mealworms, you throw that moisture source in, you walk away, they're gonna eat it all up, right? If you've got grain mites, put that moisture source in, two to three hours, take it out and get rid of it because it's gonna have grain mites on it. You'll be able to see it. It's like a really fine, it kind of looks like dust, but it moves. Um, and so what you'll be able to do after you put that moisture source in is you're gonna get a really good bead on how bad is it. Um, you'll get a, a temperature gauge basically. So you'll see how many uh, green mites are on that piece of moisture. And when you remove it, just take a mental note, maybe take a picture, whatever works best for you, uh, notes, write them down. Um, what you wanna do is that's your baseline. You wanna know what your baseline is so that when you um, put in a moisture source again, three days later, leave it in for another two to three hours, check those, those grain mites on there, they should be decreasing, okay? By withholding moisture, those grain mites are eventually gonna die off. And you're gonna need to do this process until you've got no more grain mites. And then go another week, just to be safe, okay? Um, depending on how bad it is, so there's no set, there's no set timeline here. Don't do this for a week, don't do it for a month. Excuse me. Um, do that until you don't see those grain mites and then go another week. OK, so this is very dependent on how bad the grain mite situation has gotten. And again, this happens to everyone. Sometimes things, you know, go awry. This is the, the you know, life of insect farming. Um, maybe you've gone on vacation. Maybe there was a death in the family, whatever it might be. Um, don't blame yourself. Just try to adjust and, and take care of it. Um, so after those grain mites are decreasing, you know you're on the right path. Um, again, you're gonna check your surfaces. Keep an eye on other things around the farm or around the area um, to see if, if there's anything that needs to be addressed. Have they moved to somewhere else? Um, one of the things you could also potentially do, depending on the scale or size of your farm, um, you could take petroleum jelly and line that along the top of a bin OK, so if you've got, you know, a three foot or three foot, uh, that'd be a really tall bin. If you've got a, a three inch or six inch, whatever height bin you've got, put some petroleum jelly around the top lip or top rim of that bin. Um, and that contains those 
uh, grain mites in there, right? So they'll hit that barrier, they'll go back down. Uh, so that's a good way to kind of contain them if they're just in the bin. Uh, if they're all over the bin, still could be a good idea. If you've got the petroleum jelly handy, line the inside top rim of that, um, and then do some wiping down on the outside uh, just to contain some of those. A um, couple other things that you can think about doing. Um, one of the one of the um, groups I'm in, the, the uh, mealworm farming co-op group, co-op group on Facebook, Mealworm Farming Co-op. Sorry, I messed that up a little bit. Um, uh, somebody posted in there that there was a research paper around uh, pea flour, split pea flour, um, being uh, effective at killing brain mites. And so one of the things that folks have started to do is to put in about 1% to 10% of split pea flour into their uh, substrate uh, when they have green mites. It's not detrimental to the to the mealworm. Um, I haven't done this personally myself yet, uh, but I'm going to get some so that I'm prepared. Uh, another good point is to be prepared. So have some petroleum jelly, um, have some wipes uh, somewhere potentially, um, and then grab some split pea flour uh, so that you're ready. But basically, you know, folks will sprinkle that on the top of their substrate. Um, some folks will just integrate it out of the gate. Uh, but the the paper said one to ten percent. Um, and I'll post that in the in the comments um, on the YouTube here. Uh, but that's a good way at eradicating them as well. Uh, and if you use it proactively, then that should keep them under control in general. Again, I haven't done that yet, um, so I, I haven't had to uh, try it out, uh, but I'm gonna grab some. Um, all right, so let's move into prevention methods, right? So, Prevention of grain mites uh, is the best way to not get them. Um, and a couple of different ways you can do that, depending on, again, scale, what you have available, what you're willing to do from a time perspective. Uh, so two primary methods to prevent them in the first place is to, to um, either take your substrate and put it through a deep freeze or take your substrate and put it through a heating process of a microwave scenario. Um, so let's talk about deep freeze. So um, again, depending on scale and what you're doing, I'm, I'm putting 50 pound bags of wheat bran in a deep freeze. Uh, I'll put it in there for at least 48 hours, uh, no less than 48 hours. Um, so you're talking zero degrees of 48 hours. Uh, and I have not had issues until this recent outbreak about two months ago. Um, and I, I completely forgot to talk about that. So uh, I found them, did a little panicking, which is, you know, normal. I'm trying to tell you guys not to panic, but it's it's a normal thing. Uh, but once I started thinking through stuff, um, got everything treated like I, I mentioned before, um, I tracked it down to a bag of um, like a mix type thing that I was testing out with the with the mealworms. Um, and it, it just, I let it go. I shouldn't have done it. It was my negligence, basically. Um, it got put behind a container and I totally forgot about it. So I tracked down as I was doing my cleaning, I tracked down that bag, found it, and that bag had to go as well. So that was my fault. Um, didn't put that thing through the deep freeze and just kind of left it there. And the humidity, the green mites, they just started going. Uh, all it takes is an egg and boom, they're off and running. Um, so back to the prevention. So deep freeze for 48 hours. That's what I do. Um, I take my bag. I just lay it in there, um, leave it there for, for at least uh, two days. That way that, that freezing temperature penetrates into it. Um, and, and this is a very similar thing for the uh, heating method as well, depending on how thick you go. Um, there's a, a pretty wide range of what folks recommend um, to heat uh, the the uh, substrate in an oven. Um, you want to make sure that the temperature reaches 140 degrees in an oven. Okay. If you've got a microwave and you want to try to tinker with that, do that as well. Um, perfectly fine. Um, but again, take into account how deep uh, it is, how much you have, what the volume is. You're trying to hit 140 degrees. You don't want to burn it. Right. So don't cook it so long that, you know, popcorn does the same thing. If it's too long, it's going to you know burn and make a big old mess. So um, test with it a little bit, uh, especially if you ever change microwaves. You know, don't get into a habit of just doing it for X minutes for X volume or Y volume. Um, change microwaves and boom, it's totally different and you uh, nuke something. Um, within an oven. So um, from a, an oven perspective, 200 degrees Fahrenheit for at least an hour. Uh, again, getting that core internal temperature, and that's going to vary based on if you put a giant deep container in that's got a lot of volume, uh, you're going to need to take that into account. So 
scale here really matters, right? So if you're if you need to do a 50 pound bag every couple of days like me, the oven isn't going to work. That's why I do the deep freeze method. Um, but it also works. So I've not had an outbreak using the deep freeze method uh, from my substrate in um, close to four plus years at this point um, since I started it. And the most recent one I had was because I didn't put that thing through the deep freeze and then left that bag where it was and just totally forgot about it. So um, that's a, a good summary of, you know, how to prevent those, those um, green mites from a humidity and moisture perspective. Um, when you're, you're dealing with green mites, uh, sorry, I'm getting my notes out of the way there. Um, when you're dealing with green mites and trying to prevent them, the lower the moisture or humidity level, the better. The problem is mealworms thrive in higher moisture. And so you just have to find this balancing act of what you're comfortable with. Um, the, the higher your moisture level. So if you're running in 60, 70, 75% humidity, those mealworms are going to thrive, right? You're gonna get quicker production, um, faster production, healthier mealworms. Um, however, you're also increasing the likelihood of potential outbreak. So definitely be prepared for that. If you wanna run lower, if you wanna reduce your risk a little bit, totally fine. Don't worry about that. Be a, a more stress-free um, if that's going to bother you to be higher um, and just run your farm at a lower humidity. So what that might mean is if you've got a room dedicated to it, lower the humidity there. Um, if you have a bin system or a, a, a rack system, tray system, um, just be mindful of the, the humidity within that tray, especially if it's covered or it's, it's you know enclosed. If it's a drawer, if you're closing that into something, the humidity within that bin could potentially be higher, especially after you add a moisture source. So if you throw, you know, throw a banana in there, throw water gel crystals, whatever moisture source you're giving your mealworms and you close that drawer, that microclimate inside is now higher in humidity. Okay, so your outside humidity, where we're at here in this room might be 40%, inside that bin, it could be 60, 65, 70, right? So just be mindful of that. Um, if you start seeing water around the edges of your bins, way too high humidity in that bin. Okay, so lower that down, maybe put some ventilation holes in it if it's a drawer system. Um, really just depends on where you're keeping your farm and, and what you're doing. Um, if you have any specific questions about your setup, please let me know. Uh, use Ask Miss Midwest. Ugh, I can't talk yet. I should have been drinking more coffee. Uh, AskMidwestMealworms.com. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, looks like we've got some questions in the chat here. Hey, Rachel, good morning. Um, I found a bag of yellow split peas and just blended them down to a flower like consistency, I don't believe. Uh, do you know if that would work? Uh, yellow split peas, yes. Um, I've also read that the mite eggs will hatch around 60% humidity. Is that true? Um, <laughs> correct. So uh, we were just chatting through um, how the higher humidity will really help those green mites get established, get rolling. Um, and so lowering that humidity is definitely something you want to take into account. Again, balance that out like I was talking through. Um, but the split peas. So yes, if you ground that down to a flower um, and and I, I, again, I haven't done this personally, but if you grind that down to a flour, like it has, you know, that flour like consistency, um, go to about one to 10% of your substrate. So if you've got 100 grams of substrate, 10 grams of the split pea. Uh, if you don't want to be super scientific about it, sprinkle that in along the top. Um, but if you're consistent around like you always put in a pound of, of bran or a pound of substrate, put in 10% split pea. Um, do that in a bin or two just to test it out. Um, again, since I haven't done that, I'm, I'm not leery of it. There's been a, a plenty of folks that have put it out there. The research paper says it works, um, but give it a shot and, and let's see how it rolls. Um, I'd like to try it at some point, but then I'd need to get green mites and I'm trying to avoid that. So it's a fun balancing act there. Um, let me go check my notes, make sure that uh, I covered everything. We talked about heating. Uh, we talked about deep freeze. Those are the two primary methods. Um, when you get uh, green mites, split uh, pea flour, and then that moisture source control. So every 48, 72 hours, uh, put some moisture in, let them feed for two to three hours, pull it all back out. Don't touch it again for three days. Um, you are going to see a decline in production, but the, you will be able to get those grain mites under control. Um, we talked about putting some petroleum jelly around the top rim. Uh, that's a really good way to help contain them in there. Uh, and again, I'll post the uh, link to the research paper around the split pea in the comments uh, of the video. 
All right. Well, we covered everything around uh, grain mites. We'll get this posted to uh, to YouTube so you can watch from the beginning. I see some folks starting to, to join uh, midway through. Thanks, guys, for jumping in. Um, I'll get this posted out to the podcast, Mealworms and More, uh, some additional content going out there that's not on YouTube Live. Um, just kind of mixing it up and getting information out where I can. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, again, just use that hashtag Ask Midwest Mealworms. Um, I'll do some videos like this in the future, get things posted to the various platforms and uh, get some information out. Thank you guys so much for joining and have a great day.